Welcome to class number four. In this class, we cover the baby lock and brother machines and uh, some of the little bit more detail on the, uh, this, the, all the icons in the screens. Then we cover the setup, how we customize the machine, the help, updates. So variety of information that we, some of them we touch in other classes a little bit, but this is kind of a catch all on the really detail about the screens of the machine and what the, all the icons do. So on this class, we really cover the larger machines, uh, meaning uh, Solaris Lumine, uh, uh, my machine, uh, Destiny, uh, Unity, uh, Stelle, Altair, Meridian, uh, what do I call some? The ones that have the larger screens, meaning uh, the uh, machines that have at least uh, 11 and quarter inch uh, sewing area, so the uh, bigger machines. I don't cover so much on the uh, the Aventuras and 3600s. Those ones, they have some of the uh, same symbols, but I don't have these ones detailed. It's just that there are two different class uh, machines on that one. So whenever we turn the machine on, depending on how your machine has been set up on the settings page, uh, that is when we, uh, we either get on the opening screen and or we get into home page or we go straight on to the sewing or embroidery page. And I'll go through on the setup page, how do we uh, customize the machine. But here are just images of some of the machines on the opening pages. So this just gives an idea of the machines that I cover in this class. So on the left hand side, I have several of the baby lock machines. And then on the right hand side, I have several of the brother machines. Again, not every one of, on this one, but just a collection on the. So uh, the top row are the big, bigger screen machines. At the current top of the line and then the previous top of the lines. Plus, then we have in the bottom row, there are some of the machines that have the, uh, 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 the little bit smaller screens uh, and then also with the class covers. Most of these ones are sewing embroidery machines. However, the sewing side of like a crescendo and um, uh, the, the dream uh, weaver, those ones will also be applicable for this, uh, this one too. It's just that uh, the embroidery part is not on those machines. So from the home page, you can go on to the different parts of the machine. So um, I will be doing a live demonstration on my Lumine. So some of these uh, images will be a little bit different on some of the machines, but most of it will apply. And I just have one of the little uh, event pictures. I will start with the sewing screen and I have put uh, two images. One on the left side is from the uh, Rim Machine and the Destiny. Uh, they, they sew in page look like this one when we start it up. And the one on the middle of the page that is taken from my belief from either Unity or Dreamweaver. So it's just that the, the pages may look a little bit different, but very similar symbols. So I will then go on to the line machine and go through more detail on all of these buttons, what they do and what, what all information we have on this screen, because there's a lot of information. Okay, I'm turning on my Luminaire and depending on how the machine has been set up, uh, we can uh, customize uh, what kind of a uh, part the machine turns on with. Uh, I turned mine back onto the factory default where we display an opening page. Uh, I normally, I don't have this one anymore, but that is how they come from the factory. We can customize it to bypass this, the, this page if we need it. So it's very pretty pictures, but I've seen them enough. So I actually on my machine normally have this turned off. So I just turned it back on. So now whenever the machine was turned on, all you see is just the pretty pictures. The machine is sort of awake. I need to touch the screen to wake it up. And now I'm in the home page. And on the home page, I can always get, no, mat no matter where I am in a machine, I'm on the sewing side, embroidery side, or my design center, I can always go to the home page by touching this house button on the top right corner. Uh, I could also specify this to be my uh, my opening my startup space. Other things on on this one on uh, all other except that very opening part uh, with, when the machine wasn't really awake yet. Uh, all the other pages, the top row of symbols is always visible, and same also the bottom part where we see the clock. So I'm gonna go talk about the clock first. Depending on the machine. 
uh, the Lumines, uh, Dream Machines, uh, Solaris, uh, Destiny, those ones, we have a date and time, and it is a big uh, strip of uh, on, on the bottom in displayed. On the some of the other models, uh, like uh, Unities, uh, Dreamweavers, uh, and so on, those ones we will just see the clock. If you don't want to see the actual time and date, um, we can turn that one off. So in that case, all you, you would see on the bottom is the symbol of a clock. And put the display, the time and uh, date, or some machines only the time, uh, I have to turn it on. And then th this is also where we can set the correct date and time. And you can select your display. Do you want to have your display to be so in AM, PM, or the 24 hour clock? I, I have mine shown as a 24 hour clock. So again, we can customize this all. And uh, this one, you will have to set the times when we change the daylight timing, timings, the daylight savings time. Uh, it's not, it does not automatically uh, change that one. Now we are not connected to atomic clock yet. From the home page, I can select which direction do I go. Do I want to go to the sewing side of the machine, the embroidery? And then if you have a brother machine, the Disney has its own group there, but it is part of the embroidery. And then my design center, if it is a baby lock machine, it will say IQ designer. Really does the same thing. So they just call it different names. Um, on some of the machines, instead of having embroidery, it, we may have embroidery and embroidery edit. On the embroidery side on those machines, we can just to take a design, do a little bit basic editing, like resize, rotate, and then embroider it. You can't combine designs on that, in that mode. On those machines that we have embroidery edit, that is where you can do a lot more editing and combining multiple designs. On the Lumine and Solaris, uh, the, when it says embroidery, that really is the embroidery edit. So that was combined onto on these machines. So I'm going to go to the sewing side of the machine. And we have a lot of information on this one. So I'll try to go through all the pieces. Well, first, kind of as a uh, basic things, we are on a utility side. We have two major group of uh, stitches, utility stitches and character decorative stitches. On the utility stitch tab, we have several uh, tabs that have groups of stitches. And on that first one, uh, some of the basic ones, I can just do use a, a scroll these ones. If you have a machine that has arrows in there, you just attach the arrow or the code further down because you may have multiple pages on that one. And that is all the kind of the group one. Uh, group one. Then if I call the group two, I have some more stitches there. On some of the, well, all the other than Solaris and Lumine, these tabs are on, on here on the right hand side. Lumine and Solaris, they are on the top. And I can also scroll the top path on this one too. Then there's a group three that has heirloom stitches. And then we have some of the buttonhole stitches and button sewing stitches. Then the directional sewing and the, uh, then a separate group of quilting. And then Solaris and Lumine, we have an extra star group that has some of the specialty stitches. And one of those ones uh, is a C stitch. I'll come back to this a bit later. And a basin stitch. And then these last three stitches are part of the upgrade one that gives us uh, some handle of quilting stitches. So let me go back onto the group one there. So that is just the major uh, groups how we can access the stitches. And then um, anytime when I select a stitch, it is shown up on the on here on the left hand side at actual size. When I'm in a utility stitches, it is at actual size. When I go to the character decorative stitches, there are some stitches so large that they wouldn't fit in here at actual size. So they may say uh, 50% or even 25%. So on those ones, it's kind of important to look the uh, number what it says because you may be surprised how large a stitch is when you start sewing. So on the utility side, all of these stitches are just uh, maximum seven millimeters wide, so they will easily fit on this one. Uh, there is other information. We have an image of the uh, the foot that is recommended for this one. So if I pick up like a stitch one sixteen on my machine, which is the, one of the overcasting stitches, I have a foot sewing a uh, G. Uh, that is an overcasting foot. Um, it doesn't mean that I can't use the J foot on this one if I wanted to, because J foot kind of uh, is a some way safe because it uh, allows me to use any needle position. Uh, but if I use uh, the chief foot and I use this stitch, my ma uh, machine has been already programmed so that uh, I can't change my settings on this stitch 
so that it could hit this little bar in the middle of that foot. Because if I made the stitch very narrow, if the machine allowed me to do it, I could possibly hit that little uh, opening or that little pin on this foot and it, and, and it will break, it might actually break that. Either the needle breaks or that little pin will break. So there's a safety feature. So if I put the foot on the machine that it's telling me, I don't need to think for the machine. I can't change any of these settings. Uh, I, I can't adjust it uh, to be uh, so that uh, my needle would uh, hit any part of this foot. But if I put some other foot that it doesn't know about it, I need to think for the machine. Then I need to think, well, uh, can I move my little position or change the size of the stitch so that uh, it will still fit into the opening. So that's a little safety feature. So there are some of the ones when I select the stitch, we have a different kind of uh, uh, feet come up. Like here's the, uh, uh, the blind hem stitch, the uh, blind hem foot comes up. So those are already built for those, those stitches. Let me go back on to that 103 stitch. On my machine, the, um, the default straight stitch that it came on on the sewing side is a straight stitch needle at the center position. I can still move my little position on this one. I can shift it using the left-right left, right shift button. I can move it quarter millimeter towards right or then quarter millimeter towards left uh, at, at the time. I have all the needle positions from all the way uh, from the most left all the way to the most right. Um, some of the machines we have also a number under the width setting. And on that one, I can adjust then uh, the needle position about half a millimeter at the time. Um, because straight stitch really doesn't have a width, so on those machines that, that is also available. Solaris and Lumine that was taken out because people were sometimes, uh, they didn't like about having two options, kind of confused about that uh, there was a width setting for straight stitch. But really it's a smooth the needle position on that one. But the left right shift, I can always do it. Uh, left right shift allows me to move if I have a, for instance, a zigzag stitch. I can shift that stitch uh, uh, in the, on that opening. If I reach it at uh, the other end of it, I can't go any further because now my opening in a stitch plate wouldn't be big, uh, big enough. So I can uh, use the left right shift to shift the, uh, the stitch uh, uh, no matter where I want it. If, if it has a width, like any other than the straight stitches, we have a width. On those ones, I can make the stitch wider or narrower, so I can just adjust it, and you'll see the actual size of the stitch on the screen. I can also change the stitch length. I can make it longer or closer together, and on uh, anything I change, it shows exactly on this picture at 100%. And also we see it on the settings that when I went anywhere away from the factory settings, the background on these numbers went from the back, black background to the background that what the screen has. Uh, so I can do the width, length, left, right, shift and tension. And yes, this is the top tension. I can adjust that one. We have sort of semi-automatic tension on it, so up to a certain point it works really, really well. But if I go extremes on a really thick thread, so very thin threads, I may have to adjust. Or sometimes some techniques, so we still can override it. Well, anytime I have changed some of these settings, if I want to go to back to factory settings, I have a couple ways to do it. I can either hit the reset button, or let's just change some of the settings again. I'm just going to move all those numbers. Or other option is I select the stitch again. So two ways to get back to the factory settings. Well, maybe I'd like to change some of those factory settings. Maybe I want to save them. So um, uh, on the zigzag stitch, uh, if I wanted to have it a little bit tense, like a satin stitch length, and maybe a little bit narrower, and maybe I even shift the stitch a bit. So if I like to have this setting to be my setting that I don't have to remember all those numbers and maybe even loosen my top tension. I was using this one for um, satin stitching on applique. So that might be my settings that I like to use. So uh, um, we have a memory button. Again, some of the machines, they may have a, may have a simple of a pocket. You touch the pocket and then, you, it's, uh, then we can save the settings. So in this machine, I touch the memory and it's just kind of blinked. And now it has uh, saved these settings onto my memory pocket. If I go and pick up some other stitch and come back to this one, it will pick up those settings that I had just used. I can still hit the reset to get my uh, temporarily my factory, uh, my factory settings. But if I select the stitch again, 
it'll take those settings that I had saved. Maybe next time I'd like to do something different. Maybe I want to have this stitch to look uh, quite a bit different. And I'm going to just change all these different settings. And then I said, I'd like to use this now. Well, did I overwrite it? No, not really. Because let's see, if I now select and I go back to that 109 stitch, well, it picked up the last one I saved. But what about my very first settings that I saved? Well, we have a other pattern in here says retrieve. Again, some of the machines says an image of a, a pocket. You touch the pocket and then it, uh, you get the re retrieve pattern there. So I will touch retrieve. And here you see, hopefully I have saved multiple ones on my machine. Um, so I can save in any of these utility stitches up to five personal settings. And then I can pick up to see which one I'd like to use this time. So maybe I'd like to use this setting. So I select the one and that's retrieve. So now I have those settings uh, selected for me to use. So it is a great way to save some of your favorite settings. So what if I save, let me let me put one more. I'm gonna make it like really, really wide. And then I'm gonna to save, put some of the settings and then save that one. And then maybe I'll do one more. Kind of just uh, playing some of the numbers in here and there's one more. Oh, uh oh, now it says the pockets are full. So if you try to save a sixth one, it will tell you that no, uh, you can't save any more personal settings, but it's not going to overwrite any of your current settings. Uh, it, it will just ask you kind of politely that you, you need to delete the one you don't want because it's not going to overwrite your settings. So I just touch OK. That's retrieve. And sure enough, all the pockets are full. So maybe this last one I don't need anymore. So I can delete just that setting. And it does ask me, are okay to delete the settings? I'm not deleting the stitch. Such my personal settings for that stitch. So now I have an empty spot. Uh, if I wanted to delete all of the ones going to start on the blank screen, I can do that one also. So now I would have another place that I could save that one. So it has a, a lot of capability to keep my favorite ones in the machine. So let, let me just get the factory set, and I can still always get the, re, fact, uh, the, resets, uh, the factory settings for any of these stitches. Um, other information that we have, there's a sample of a spool, and that on that spool, what it uh, shows uh, on uh, is a color. Depending on a machine, you may have three or four colors. So I can customize, do I want my stitch to display on the red? It doesn't mean I had to sew on a red color or thread, but it just shows the, kind of the image better. Where does this become handy? Is that when I'm uh, using a camera on the machines that have a camera, I can use that one, and that, that one and display how that stitch looks like on the certain fabric. Um, I have uh, on my machine four different colors. Other times that it is really handy, let me go and select a uh, three-step zigzag. Well, it says three steps elastic zigzag. If I'd like to see how does this stitch look like when I when I sew it without actually seeing, because you can't really see those uh, needle penetrations on this color. If I select the yellow color, I can kind of see that the, uh, the little darkest uh, dots, that that is where the needle would go down. Well, sometimes I think, well, I, I'd like to zoom in. Well, we can zoom in. Uh, we have a, a little pattern on my machine. It is on the, kind of on the top left corner. Some of the ones it might be on the middle or a little bit different location, but it looks like a piece of uh, like a little uh, flag or a little piece of paper, and it has images of stitches. So if I click that one, it's called the image key. It'll give me an uh, image of this one. And again, I had selected that yellow color, so it's kind of hard to see, but here's a magnifying glass. If I touch that one. I'm zooming in 200%. So now I can see that, yep, there's a uh, little needle go there, one, one, one more. So, yep, sure enough, it is a three step zigzag. If I had it on a blue color, it's kind of hard to see that one. So, all it does, it doesn't make the stitch any larger to sew, it's just a displays in here uh, 200%. So, it's just it's called an image key. It's a great way to look at uh, a closer look on the stitches. But it's really handy when using some of the character decorative stitches that are really large, and then you can see them at actual size. Yeah, and the, and the really the, uh, great uh, use for this different color on this one is, uh, like the machines that we have a camera. That will be the uh, Dream Machine, Destiny, Solaris, and Luminaire. I can always turn on the live camera. See, the stop row 
in on this screen always stays there so I can uh, select a live camera no matter whether I'm in a sewing side or embroidery side so on this one I, I have put a little piece of fabric underneath so I could see exactly where that zigzag stitch are, is going so if I need to make my zigzag stitch a little bit narrower or shift it I don't need to move the fabric I can see exactly where the stitch goes that is where it is handy to have the different colors on that uh, thread display because what if my fabric was black or really dark one it's now very hard for me to see that one but if I pick up uh, maybe red would show better uh, or then the uh, yellow shows really nicely on the dark fabric so that's that's just a helpful thing to have a different color in there depending on what uh, uh, kind of fabric I'm using uh, depending on the machine the Lumina and Solaris we see a fairly large display of the uh, kind of the, how the stitches would show up because the camera is further in the front so we have a little bit longer viewing area uh, on the so, uh, Destiny and Dream machine you see about halfway clear and rest of it kind of fades out a question we often get is that uh, is my camera not working properly because it look like, looks like it is not in focus it's not meaning that it's not in focus it's just that that is how far the camera can see but we see a really good area on that regardless but what if I touch this little ma a magnifying glass on the bottom? I don't really have to touch the glass. I can touch anywhere on this uh, stitch area. If I click on there, I get an image that shows an, an overhead view. So I will see straight down. So I, I, instead of me using the hand wheel to see where my needle would go, I can just turn my uh, overhead camera on. And I can zoom in to really have a close look on that one. So I have my J foot in the machine. And then uh, if I touch that little button on the Solaris Alumine, it's a symbol of a needle. On the Destiny and Dream machine, it says something about needle drop point or something. I can't now remember exact, but if I click this one, it will put a little crosshairs to show me that that is where the needle is going to go. So that way, when I start stitching, if I was doing the zigzag in the edge of this fabric, I could see that, yes, my first swing of the needle would go right on the edge of that one. Other uh, things we have on this one, I could put a little grid line. So if I wanted to kind of make sure that everything is pretty straight, I can kind of uh, keep it on there, kind of keep it li lining up, little grid lines to help on also. And then the last one on this one, if I select, uh, click this one, it will tell me that I, uh, I, don't, uh, I could save this image into a memory stick. I don't have a memory stick connected at the moment, so I'll just click cancel. Uh, it will allow me to just save an image of this one. I'm not sure what I would do with it, but I can do that. So let me close to, uh, close that window. And then I'm still getting the image on this one. To close this one, I will touch the camera button on the top row again. So that is really where it's handy to use the different colors on, the, on, on there. Well, other information we have on this screen. Uh, we have uh, several buttons on, uh, on again, depending a bit on the machine, they may be a group of four, or this one, they're a group of four on a, kind of on a row. Uh, we have uh, uh, the uh, securing button, uh, the automatic uh, trimming function, and then uh, then uh, then I have the uh, on my Solaris and Lumine, the default needle up and down. Well, this is now different on the different machines. Only the Solaris and Lumine, we have this button on, on this screen. On the default, when I stop sewing, my needle stays down. Uh, if I uh, touch the uh, other button, now my needle will be st staying up. Uh, so the minute, minute I stop sewing. All other machines, this setting is done under the setting screen. So that's the only difference. It's the same setting, it's just the location we do on a different. Solaris and Lumine are the only ones we have on this one. But all the machines, we have the automatic securing and then also the uh, trimming function. And then we have the uh, uh, hover or the uh, pivoting function. Let me call that pivoting function first. So what this one does is when I stop sewing, my, knee, my foot, pressure foot pops up a little bit. Needle stays down, but my pressure foot just lifts up a little bit so that I can rotate the fabric without manually lifting the pressure foot up. It's a really great function on applique. So anytime when I have selected a function, it will get highlighted. And then to unselect it, I just touch it again to take it out. 
this pivoting function on some machines, not all the machines, but several machines, it is one of those settings that stays on. If I have left this one on and I turn my machine off and turn it back on, it will remember that function. Not all the machines, not all the models do that one, but some of, some of the ones do. Like my Lumine does that one. Well, then on some of the machines, we have a um, what the fourth button, again, depending on which model it is, if you have a guideline marker, aka uh, laser light, uh, that button would be uh, on, a, on a group of these ones. So Larissa Lumine, that button was moved on the top. And it uh, looks like just a little light coming out of the uh, little, um, kind of a uh, plop. <laughs> so um, if I select the guideline marker, uh, the, on, uh, the, all other than Solaris and Lumine, you would see a little laser light then showing up on your just on, on your stitch plate, and it can be moved. There's little arrows that you can move that laser light. Solaris and Lumine, the guideline line marker uh, comes as uh, a separate window, and I would need to first turn it on, and it will show in uh, on the display. That was one of the updates that uh, it will show a little red line. It doesn't mean that that's where it exactly is, but it just shows that that is uh, the, la uh, the uh, mark that we have turned the la laser light or guideline marker on. Actually, on Solaris and Lumine, it is a projection. It's not the laser anymore. Um, on the Solaris and Lumine, we have uh, two lines. We can have the main line and the sub line. And on the main line, we can change the, uh, if you have to upgrade one, you can have it as a line or as a dot. Dot is great for when you do free motion quilting, you see exactly where the stitch would go. Most of the normal sewing, I would use it as a straight line. And I can select the color of that line, whether I want to have a green, white or red. Uh, it's just depending on the fabric, and some uh, colors will show better on one fabric than other. And I can change the length of that line. So if I have a curved lines that I'm stitching around, the short line might be helpful. So I can change that one. I can also shift that one. I can shift it towards me. Or I can I can go any further back, but I can go towards me a bit. And then, of course, I can shift it to left and right. If I call it a subline, uh, on mine at the moment was turned off. It just remembers what I had used the last time. When the, as a default, we have an other line that comes up, and a default it is five millimeters. While well, mine I had last time used quarter inch, so I can have a, a distance between the guideline markers. So in this case, I had put my main line uh, guideline marker to be where my needle goes if it is needle at the center position, and my sub line I have at quarter a quarter inch away from that. So that could be my edge of the fabric, and the other one will show where my stitching goes. And again, I can select the colors on that subline also. And I can change this setting. So minute I go somewhere that, that has a, uh, a number that is uh, close to the inch number, like an eighth of an inch, you get that, that number there also. Otherwise, it will just show the millimeter numbers. And then I get here the quarter inch. I can also see this guideline marker as a grid line. And last time I used a half an inch grid on that one. It's a great one when sewing uh, decorative stitches. Those ones that move the fabric sideways a lot makes it a whole lot easier to keep them parallel lines. And then we have also the angle line, which is uh, really handy to uh, ma when making the 60 degree or 45 degree angles on the stitching. So I can line up my guideline markers so that uh, I, I know I, got, I will start stitching exactly on the right spot. Or I can have the other one turned off. And then I can just close this window. So I left mine on. So it will remind that the other my light, light is on. There's a line showing up there. So the guideline marker or the laser light, that was that's a great guidance when stitching. And then if I want to turn it off, on mine I had to just to select it. That's off and then close the window. On the, all the others, you just touch this button again and the laser light will turn off. Well then, let me go back on these two ones, and I'll actually go back on do my straight stitch. We have multiple straight stitches. It looks like four straight stitches. Well, how difficult can this be? Well, really, the, on the straight stitches, the 103, which is the straight stitch in the middle, 104 is the straight stitch in the middle. So what's the difference? Well, there, is, there are little kind of two little lines on the one of the ones, another one has a dot. The same is in here with the 101 and 102. These are the straight stitches that the needle position as a default is at the left position. 
and the, uh, the 101 and 102 are the exactly the same description. The only difference is that one has the dot and one has the line. We have another pair. Um, this one is the 109 and 110. The same way, they uh, really look the same kind of zigzag stitch. It's just that we have those, uh, the one is as a line and one has a dot. Well, what this, one's, uh, what, what this means is that the, uh, when we turn our automatic reinforcement function, which would be this button on the screen that has a look like a little U-turn and a little dot. If I select this one, uh, okay, I have to kind of say this little disclaimer, depending a little bit how your machine has been set up, uh, and we can go through the settings, we go through, there's a little bit of a setting on, the, on that one. But uh, regardless on the uh, beginning, now when I start stitching, if I have a stitch that has those two straight lines, my machine will show three stitches forward, three stitches back, and then continue forward as long as I continue stitching. So that is a reinforcement when it does a backward stitching. If I had selected the stitch 104, in this case, it will stitch uh, three stitches in place. So instead of back and forth, it will stitch in place and then continue forward. So it's just an automatic reinforcement. Uh, depend, uh, it just matters uh, which stitch I selected, whether I stitch in place or if I do the back, back and forth stitching. Um, as for ending, the machine doesn't know how long your seam is. I can stop it and if I continue stitching, it still goes forward. How do I do the reinforcement in the bottom? That is when I would touch one of those uh, reinforcement buttons on the machine bed, the main main uh, kind of U-turn or the little dot for the uh, straight stitching or the uh, stitching place button. So those ones, um, I, I can always, uh, I can just do it. If I touch the button, that will then tell the machine that I'm finished. I, I'm going to be now uh, stitch, uh, doing the reinforcement and then it stops. Uh, so we had the automatically it knows the beginning, the ending we had to tell the machine by touching the uh, button on the machine bed. Uh, well, if I if I have this stitch selected, the 104, and if I touch on my machine, if I go and touch on the machine bed, the button that looks like a little U-turn, the reverse button, if I touch that one, my machine would actually go backwards uh, three stitches and forward and stop. Well, even if I had selected this stitch. Well, it is a setting, so I'll go through the setting a bit later on that one, how we can change it. On uh, some of the machines, if I, uh, if I, it didn't matter what button on those ones I will, I will touch, it will still stitch in place because of the stitch that has been selected. So that's a, a little re reinforcement priority setting that we can change on the settings page. Uh, but in general, it will, uh, it will, um, it should kind of do the same stitching. Well, some of the ones we don't have options, like we don't have the uh, two versions on that stitch. In these stitches, it will stitch in place, because some of these stitches you can't really go reverse, especially like if you have an overcasting stitch and you use this, uh, uh, this uh, foot that has the little pin. Well, I can't go reverse because my uh, stitches would get caught on this little pin and it will jam it. So it's, it's just the stitches are built with lots of safeties that way. Well, then the automatic um, uh, secure, uh, 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 the trimming function. See, when I click the trimming function, my reinforcement came on also. Let me, if I turn that one off, I can have the automatic uh, reinforcement on its own. But if I select the trimming function, I, I will have the automatic reinforcement too. If I try to turn this off, both of them turn on. So they, these two are connected. So what this one does, when I, if, uh, now that when I would start stitching, like on this stitch, it will stitch in place. A few stitches continue forward, and whenever I'm finished, I will touch on a machine. Doesn't matter which button on those reinforcement, the little bullseye or the reverse button, if I push that on a machine bed, it will uh, secure the, uh, by stitching in place, and then it on the end will cut the threads. So that saves me a lot of uh, clicking on the buttons. So those are the automatic reinforcement and automatic trimming function. Um, then some of the stitches, notice like when I selected this stitch, one of the buttons went gray. I can't use my pivoting function with this stitch. And again, it's a safety feature because when I sew this uh, with this foot, uh, those stitches go over that little pin. And in that case, if I now had my pivoting function on, my, left, my 
foot will lift the fabric together at the same time because the fabric is attached onto the foot. So that is the reason why in this uh, foot, uh, this foot, this stitch, that function has been, been turned off. So just depending on what stitch I select, I get different that some of the, sometimes some functions have been turned off. It's not that there's a problem in the machine, it's just that's how they were programmed. It's just little safety features. Some, some of the stitches uh, on, the, on the utility stitch area, we have letters. Like if I scroll down on, the, on that first tab, we have five stitches that has a letter S. And if I select any of these five stitches, all I get on this as a description with side cutter. Uh, that is uh, a special foot and it actually shows on the foot as an S foot. It's a special foot that does not come with any of the machines. It's an optional foot and the manual has an image on that one. It is a foot that has a tiny little blade. And there's an arm that goes over the needle bar. So when I uh, put that foot on machine and I start stitching, that blade cuts the fabric a little before it gets sewn. So we have a straight stitch, a zigzag, and then three other overcasting stitches that can be used with that one. So it's kind of like a mini search in a way that it cuts the fabric ahead of time before it overcasts it. Um, it's uh, really designed for the lighter weight fabrics. If your fabric is really thick uh, quilt or upholstery fabric, no, that blade's not big enough for that. You need to search for that one. But it's a great function for some of the lighter weight fabrics. Where I really like it is on this um, uh, straight stitching uh, for the front seam. That saves me one step because front seam you normally sew, uh, you put your fabrics uh, wrong sides together, sew a quarter inch seam trim half the seam allowance away and then fold the fabric one more time, right sides together and sew another quarter inch seam. Well, with this one, if I sew the first part using this uh, straight stitch with the side cutter, it will do the stitching and also at the same time it will do that, uh, uh, the trimming on that. So it saves me one step, I don't have to manually trim it. Some of the other stitches we have letter P. And the P on this one, these are piecing stitches. That's when on a quilting, when you do piecing, uh, we have some built-in piecing stitches. They are still straight stitches. And my, on my machine, we have three of those ones. There's a piecing stitch left and right, and then one is at the middle. The middle one is kind of an interesting one. It is locked in the middle. I literally, I can't move my needle position on this one. This is a safety one to use with your quarter inch foot because it has a little small opening so I can't accidentally move my little position on that one. The image still shows as a J foot because the quarter inch foot is not the one of the standard feet that comes with machine. So that's why it's not, it's not shown up, it just shows the standard foot on the display. But it's a great one with the quarter inch foot. Uh, the uh, business stitch left and right. These are designed to be used with the quarter inch uh, foot. Because in that case, if I line up my edge of the fabric with the edge of this uh, foot, my needle position is quarter inch from the edge. Because see, my needle position has moved from the center 3.5 millimeters to 5.5. Because what these numbers mean is, uh, if I had picked up ordinary straight stitch, there we go. Uh, if I have a needle at the center, the number is a 3.5. If I picked up a straight, uh, straight stitch in the left position, my uh, number is, three, uh, one, is 0, 0.0. I can always move that needle position anywhere on any of these straight stitches other than one that was locked in place. And I can move them quarter millimeter at a time on, on the left right shift. When it is 7, that means that I'm now all the way to the right on that uh, opening in a stitch blade. So any of these ones, I could have done my quarter inch seam also by using the standard foot by just moving my needle position. The default setting for the these first four straight stitches for the length is two and a half. Well, that is often a little bit too long stitch length when I'm doing piecing. So if I pick up one of these piecing stitches, the default length is already shortened. Again, I can still always adjust that one. And of course, I can save those settings on my memory too. But those are already built-in stitches in a machine that uh, are handy to use. So we have the uh, businesses left and then a business uh, 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 left and right. The one on the left side would be lining up the uh, fabric gets on the left side of that foot. So the P for piecing. If I call it a, a Q tab on the machine, there are 
three stitches on this one that I have B stitches also. And there's one in the middle, which is exactly the same as I had on that number one tab. But then the species stitch right and left, these are a little bit different. Because on these ones, if I now use the left right shift, it moves even less than I moved on my earlier one. In the earlier one, I moved quarter millimeter. Now I'm moving eighth of a millimeter. I have 57 nil positions on these two stitches. So they are a little bit different than the piecing stitches that we have on that first group. I only have like 27 or 29, I'm not sure exactly what the number is, but we have a, just 20 something uh, nil positions on these, because these move quarter millimeter at the time. Uh, then we have stitches that has a letter Q, and those, those ones are then related as a quilting stitches. So here's a handle of quilting stitch, and some more Q stitches on this one. Because if I go to the tab, the Q tab, we have then several more on this one. Uh, and some of these ones, they don't have a Q on it, but they've been put under this group because they're often used with the application, some of the quilting things. But the Q, they were just a little repair, repairing as some of the quilting, specific quilting stitches. Then, depending now on the machine, uh, all other except Solaris and Lumine, on that uh, cute group, if you go to the very last stitch, there is one other extra stitch in there. On Solaris and Lumine, that stitch was moved under the S for the specialty group, which is a letter C. If I select that one, on this case, I get a funny looking foot. It says an X foot, and it says a free motion couching stitch. That one is a special stitch made for free motion uh, couching uh, uh, foot. Uh, because, and you kind of hear the noises on my machine. Because when I selected that stitch, the machine dropped the feed dogs and lifted my uh, foot up a little bit. That one was, just, was set my machine ready for you uh, use this free motion couching. So I can free, uh, free motion, I will put a yarn on that foot and uh, then uh, move it around to, just to do a pretty uh, uh, three, three dimensional embellishments. So that's a special uh, stitch. On uh, Solaris and Lumine, it's under the S tab. All the other ones, it is under the Q tab, the very, very last stitch. And then on the Solaris and Lumine, we have a special stitch that is only on these machines. It's a basting stitch, but it is a free motion basting stitch. So my feed dogs are still dropped on this one. And uh, I, my dis uh, description shows to use the end foot. So this uh, based in stitch, how it works on this machine is that uh, you would need to really uh, first secure in the beginning those stitches. So I would just hold down the uh, on the machine bed that uh, securing button uh, and then attacking down in the beginning. And then when I start stitching, my feet dogs are not moving the fabric. I literally have to pull the fabric through the machine. I just kind of, uh, it's like really did, uh, pretending that if you do like in a long arm quilting, when you paste the quilt edges together, uh, that way your feet dogs are and your foot is not really touching the fabric, you just kind of slide it underneath there. So it's a free motion basting stitch. And then those three stitches, extra ones that I have on this group, those are hand look quilting stitches. And when I selected one, my feet dogs came back active and my foot went down. So it, there's already lots of things happening when I touch the, uh, touch the screen on the stitches. So this one, these are three different versions of uh, uh, hand look quilting stitches that came with the upgrade one on Solaris and Lumine. We have under the Q tab and also under number one tab, there is some other hand look quilting stitch. I, I did a little demonstration about these ones on the class number three. So if you watch the videos on that one, you see the details when I was showing demonstrations on all those stitches. So we have some, some stitches that has little extra letters on, on there as well. Then we have lots of additional functions available. Some of the machines, you see a whole row of different function on the, functions on the side. Some of the ones there are this, uh, set up on those extra buttons in the kind of under the stitches in the, in the bottom part, just be between the stitches and the settings. On the Solaris and Lumine, we have a little extra button on the top right corner. When I click this one, a drop down menu brings up uh, uh, some of those uh, buttons. So no matter which machine we have, there is a symbol for free motion. And this one, when I select this one, uh, my 
we can hear again noise in the machine. My feed dogs has dropped. And then also uh, my foot went up a little bit. My tension system changed. And uh, my display shows on old foot on this one. So that is just showing that I have now uh, gone on the free motion. Um, didn't matter what stitch I had selected on these ones. Uh, I, like I actually had blanket stitch selected. It just said, well, if you want to do free motion blanket stitch, well, you just put the old foot on this one. And you go on some of the quilting stitches. If I select the, uh, the uh, piece in stitch a little at the center, which is a straight stitch, I'm going to lock in the middle. It gives me a simple of a C. That is a stippling foot has a tiny hole on it. That way I can't really move my little position on it, so it's going to save, save stitch to use with that foot. But any of these other ones, it will just give me the O symbol on those ones. And you go back and pick up my, because I have the reason I picked up my uh, blanket stitch. So open that window again. To uh, get your feet dogs back up, I will click this button. Your noises. Your feet dogs physically did not come up. They won't come up physically until you do your first stitch. They will drop down minute that push that button, but to come up, you have to do, after you engage them, you have to then do one stitch and they'll come up. Then we have other uh, functions. There's, uh, uh, they are going to pattern uh, begin and the ending functions. So this one, there's like a, a little needle and a star heart star. This one is the back to beginning pattern. So if I was uh, sewing this blanket stitch and I was kind of, a, well, I wanted to, for some reason, I was in the middle of the uh, on this pattern and I wanted to start back from the beginning. So I will just then go ahead and touch this pattern and it will take me back to the beginning on this pattern. Um, of course, if I had selected the stitch again, it would take me back to the beginning. But if I change some of my settings on uh, from here and not save those settings, it will also then put my settings back to default. But if I use the back to beginning button, it will not change. It will keep my uh, temporary change settings and it will just take me back to the beginning on that pattern. So it's a great one when you sew decorative stitches. Maybe you sew the row of uh, stitches and like for instance, this little star stitch in here, the daisy. Maybe I had sewn part of this one and then I didn't have enough fabric to finish on this one. So that way... And especially, let me just move the settings a little bit. If I change some of these settings uh, a little bit, so uh, that way, if I was sewing um, and I didn't get all the way to finish the last pattern, and I want to sew the next row to starting from the beginning, so if I if I select the stitch again, it'll put all these settings back to default unless I have changed, changed uh, saved them. But if I touch this pattern. It will keep my settings. It does not uh, change those ones. So it's a, it's a great function to get back to beginning. Then this next one uh, will do uh, either single one or continuous row of stitching. It will kind of look like, do I need to touch the one on the right side? Or no, it's really, it doesn't matter what part of this button you touch. It just toggles between the symbol on that one. So when I select a single pattern, that's all I would get. So if I want to sew just a single little star, I can do that one. It's a great way to just to use it for some of the tack down stitches. Uh, but it also uh, can be used uh, whenever I am, uh, 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 if I'm sewing the whole row on this one, I'd like to my last pattern to be finished completed. So in, uh, instead of me watching the carefully and counting the stitches to see when I'm at the end, I will just whenever, let's say I was sewing about this far and I wanted this last one to finish complete, I will just touch this pattern and it will finish that pattern I was stitching and stop the machine there. So it can be used for two ways, either just to do one single uh, pattern or then uh, complete the pattern that I was already stitching. And now I'm going to go on to back on my blanket stitch because I need to have a stitch that uh, uh, shows can, is, is not symmetrical because the next one is a mirror image and this one allows me to just flip the stitch uh, vertically so that way uh, if I want to have my blanket stitch to go on the on that side of the applique I can I can mirror that is nice to see exactly how the stitch would look like on this display uh, I just uh, click the button and I see exactly how it would be stitching and especially if I'm doing a blanket stitch, if I turn on my camera, 
I could see that, oh yeah, that will be going on the edge so that my fabric may be on mine. I will just move it a little bit further close in here so I see exactly where that stitches would be going. So that is really nice to have in this blanket. If I have it this way, I know this, oops, I'm going the wrong way. Um, other ones on, um, uh, other than using the camera, uh, on the Solaris and Lumine, we can also project that stitch onto the uh, fabric. So if I turn it on, it, uh, it is this little projection. I'm not going to move the camera at the moment. It'll just kind of get seasick if I move the camera. But uh, I've done some of that one on the cla class number three. I was using uh, some of the uh, projection functions. So I'll turn the projection off there. Uh, then we have uh, a, a, a double needle safety. So if I select this again, it looks like this. I got two halves, really is the same pattern. Doesn't matter which part I touch it, it'll just toggle between those two. So this one, we now got two rows of stitches because this would uh, show exactly how it will stitch. It will have two uh, uh, rows because of the double needle. But it is a safety function. On this, on this double needle safety, if I leave this one on and then I will turn my machine off and then turn back it on, You'll still remember that function. So in case maybe I wanted to try to now do a uh, uh, blind hem stitch, it will just tell me, no, you can't do a blind hem stitch when you have that, that twin needle mode selected because blind hem stitch with a blind hem foot wouldn't work. So there's a lot of safeties on that one. So I had to turn this one off first and then I can do the blind hem. See, some of these functions are not available when I select some stitches. I can't, I can't do a mirror image on that one because it would not work with that foot and that, on that stitch. And then I can't do my uh, my double needle on this one. So some of these ones we already have the safeties built in. So depending on what stitch I select, like this one, I can do the mirror, but I can't do the double needle on this one. But this one I can do also double needle. And depending on some of the stitches, the double needle really make a really nice uh, nice effects. I can't use the double needle on very dense stitches, it will just uh, make a big jam. Um, but this is a great safety feature. Uh, it is uh, referred in on to the 2mm double needle that came with the machine. So if I put that needle in the machine and I put my stitch width all the way to 7, the widest I can do on my utility stitches, that means 7 millimeters from the most a left swing on that uh, left uh, needle, the, uh, the most right swing on the right needle. So that is the seven millimeters. So I can put my width all the way there, but my machine is always safe enough that it knows that uh, that, is, uh, that it, it will let me do that double needle. It will still fit onto that opening. If I turn off that double needle safety, my stitch now I can hear noises in the machine too. Now this is seven millimeters uh, on the single pattern. If I have this setting on this stitch and I put the double needle without telling the machine about it, it's gonna break the needle on a very, uh, well, maybe not the first stitch, maybe the second stitch on this pattern. Because that needle is wider than the opening on the stitch plate. But if I tell the machine this one, it made this uh, stitch a bit narrower and it, uh, it's built so that uh, it will fit with the double needle in it. One more safety thing on this one is, it will dis disengage your automatic needle threader, which is a great function because you're not allowed to use your automatic needle threader with the double needle, it will break it, probably. Uh, so if I push the uh, needle threader button now in my machine, I will get a little sad face saying that in twin needle mode, the automatic needle threading button cannot be used. Can remind you that mm -mm, you have to manually thread those needles. So it's a great safety feature. Well, what if I'm using an other kind of double needle? Maybe the six millimeter double needle. Well, the machine doesn't know about that one. That is when we need to think for the machine. Six millimeter double needle, I pretty much just can do a straight stitch needle at the center because the opening on my machine stitch plate is seven millimeters. If my needle, two needles are six millimeters apart, there's not really any uh, wiggle room around that one. So I better have just my straight stitch needle at the center on that one. So those other really wide double needles, you had to think for the machine. Uh, if I had, let me just turn the double needle safety off on this one. And if I'm using a four millimeter double needle, then I would most likely just do not to tell my machine that I have a double needle, 
but I would go and put my stitch width to three. Why did I put three? Well, opening on my stitch plate is seven millimeters. If my double needle is four millimeters, a little bit of a math, seven minus four leaves me three millimeters wiggle room. So that way then I had to think for the machine if I use any of those wider than two millimeter double needles. But if I put the two millimeter, I don't need to do any math. I will just tell my machine and then it doesn't let me do anything uh, that will hurt the machine or break the needle. Then on uh, the Solaris and Luminate, there's one other button on this one, which is for the manual buttonhole. So if I go on to the buttonhole stitches and I select one of those buttons, oh, uh, that here tells me I left my double needle function on. I love the way it tells me what to do, so I need to turn that one off. And then I can select the buttonhole stitch. So now that I have selected some of the buttonhole stitches, again, some other functions are not available. But I have on this one a uh, button. Again, this is only on the Solaris and Lumine. That when I attach this button, I can uh, set on this one how big my slit on opening on this one it, uh, is. And I believe I can go all the way to 40, 40 or 45 millimeters. And maybe it's even more, like 47 millimeters. So I can make a really, really long button, button hole, and it tells me to use the A, a plus foot on this one. So uh, we, we normally do our button holes using our automatic button hole foot, and uh, where we uh, put the button on it so it measures the size of the button and makes it automatic. But uh, on the Solaris and Lumine, we can kind of overwrite that one and uh, enter the number manually for that one. And it can be up to 47 millimeters. If I turn that one off, I'm back onto the actually measuring from the from the button hole foot itself. We do have um, on uh, most of these larger machines, we do have also the uh, manual button hole that you can use the end foot just to show the left side bead to the bar tack and the right side bead and the, uh, another bar, bar tack. We can do those manually too, that way if you need to make a really large button hole. So just a kind of multiple functions. Well then, uh, on, uh, uh, on some of the machines, uh, as part of these other groups, you may have a uh, button for the uh, ultrasound pen. That one is available on uh, Dream Machine, Destiny, Unity and Dreamweaver. Uh, and then also the Spirit, and now I can't remember the, some of the new names on some of the newer machines. But there's a little pen, ultrasound pen that plugs in the machine, of course Crescendo uh, is another one of the sewing side. So those machines, I can use the, uh, the ultrasound pen to set my laser light position and also the uh, position for my needle position uh, if I have a straight stitch. I can also set up the stitch width and uh, uh, on the zigzag stitches or decorative stitches, and then I can set up my ending point. And in Brory side, I can set the, uh, set the angle and the position on the design. I don't have that one on this machine, so I would have to do another video about that, maybe some point to show how to use that ultrasound pen. However, if you go on your machines, especially Dream Machine and Destiny, if you go on your little question mark button in there, there's a little video about how to use that one. So that might be helpful. And then or if you have a Dream Machine or Destiny and also the Quattro and Elissimo, those ones we also had one button that looked like a picture of a, uh, a needle going in the edge of the fabric. That one is a, a function that I can use my camera to keep my seam allowance. So I don't even have to guide the fabric. Again, I'm sorry I can't do that on this video because this machine doesn't have that function. So depending on the models, we may have a couple extra ones. Some, some machines we have uh, some uh, extras and some we don't. But those are some of the functions. Again, my machine, I had to touch this little button on the top right corner to open up the window. On some of the other ones, they may be on the bottom and some of the ones, they are already on the side on this one. Just to summarize, some of the images that, that we were going through and different functions. I have on this page uh, copies of the sewing screens from the Alte or Stelle, I'm not sure which one it was because they're the same. On that one, you see those functions that I mentioned earlier, uh, or they are on the right hand side. And then also those uh, automatics reinforcement that remain hover and the laser light buttons on, uh, on the left hand side. The image on the right side on this slide 
that is taken from the dream machine or destiny again the same picture so that one again this uh, buttons are on the side and on this one you see those two extra ones that i could not demonstrate on my machine the sensor pen and the edge sewing so those functions are available on the dream machine and destiny and then on these other ones, the scissor button, reverse sewing, uh, guide beam, the laser light, and the pivoting function on that one. And then I'm going to go one up. Uh, this mid uh, picture in the middle, this one was taken from uh, either Unity or the Dreamweaver uh, XE. So this one we have uh, the uh, laser lights and then the, these buttons kind of on the row and then some of these other functions and here's that uh, ultrasound pen that is available on that machine. It was then let's call what I see what other buttons we have on this one. As I mentioned the top row and the, and the time those ones I can see them pretty much any screen. Only screen that those are not available are that opening screen and the machines really not totally on yet. So let me go from right to left this time. So the, there's a button of the house. So anytime I touch this one, I can get to the home page. So now that um, I had been uh, picking up stitches and playing, my machine is saying that, um, are you sure you want to cancel? It may say, uh, okay, to delete. But uh, they depend on the machine, they change the wording a bit. But it just means that did you accidentally touch this button because you, you were just getting ready to do a zigzag on this one. I can still hit cancel and get back where I was. But if I really meant that one, then I would touch OK. So in this case, I can always get back to my home page. So if I'm, I was uh, doing sewing and then I want to go embroidery, I don't have to turn the machine off to do that one. Even if my embroidery unit was connected, I can still go to the sewing side. So I, I have options on that, all the my design center. So this is kind of like a crossroads. I can always go home on this one. So I go back to the sewing side. And again, my machine, the default is one or three stitch. So that's kind of like when I turn my machine on, that's where it would come. Then the next button on this screen, there is a lock. I love this function. So many times I've been uh, in the past machines that didn't have this function. I was doing free motion quilting. And especially those past machines, we didn't have a big opening on the machine. So yours, uh, that screen was much closer and uh, it was easier to accidentally change the settings when you moved your uh, big quilt sandwich just by touching the screen accidentally. Well, this is so great function because when I set my stitches how I want to have, let's say I was doing green motion quilting, so I have my needle at the center position and I will then drop my feed dogs. So now that I'm ready to continue stitching, uh, uh, all I have to do on this one is to touch the little lock. So what happened now is I can touch the screen, no matter where I touch it, windows or whatever, my screen is locked. However, I can still stitch and my machine is all, all the uh, buttons on the machine pair and my foot pair, all of that still works. Only thing that is locked is the screen. So it's a great function so that I don't accidentally change my settings halfway what I'm doing. Also, uh, I've heard people uh, saying that they have a nosy cat and then they, they like to poke the screen and kind of uh, change stitches for them. I said, well, on that case, when you select your stitch, whatever you're doing, select the stitch and the settings and lock the screen and don't show the cat where the unlock button is. Because only way to get out of this mode is to select that lock button again. So now everything is back again operational, but that just locks the screen. So it's a really great feature. Then what we have on the next one, there is a nil uh, foot exchange key. And when I touch this one, my whole screen will not grayed out except that one button. And see, my mouse doesn't even work at the moment. So everything is locked. Now my machine is even locked. I can't even sew at the moment. So uh, my little red light came on my machine. And if I hit my foot pedal, nothing will happen. It is a safety mode. So this time when I change my feet and the needle, I can't accidentally start stitching and sew through my finger. So that it's again, it's, it's a, even a bigger lock feature than the, the screen lock. And to get out of this one, I need to touch my finger in there to touch the screen. So I'm back operational. So my, whenever I touch that pattern, uh, it automatically straight went on that because my pressure foot was down. So let me lift my pressure foot up. So in this case, now that my pressure foot is up, and I touch this button, I get the message. 
and it says okay to automatically lower the pressure foot because it needs to have that uh, manual lever available uh, because if I use that um, pattern on a machine bed that lifts a little up and down that one uh, kind of disengages that manual lever that lifts the pressure foot up so we need to have that available. So the machine kind of politely asks, can I lower it? It asks because just in case you had your fingers underneath the pressure wood, it doesn't just smack your fingers. So I can just say, okay, go ahead. And now it lowered my pressure foot down and I it put the machine on that safety mode. So I can use that manual lever to safely change my needles and feet. On uh, Dream Machine and Destinies, uh, I, I can't remember now the release level that it came up. But whenever you went back onto the uh, mode in here that we are uh, back ready to stitch uh, and uh, taking that feature out, it gave you a little message that uh, it's recommended to uh, calibrate the camera. And you kind of go, oh no, what I'm meant to do it now? Really don't have to. Uh, I've done that calibration once. And uh, on Luminaire, when I go through the settings, I show where, you, where that function is on this one. What it is kind of telling us that uh, you may have changed your needles and maybe you want to calibrate your camera that is reading correctly. There's a really good uh, description in the manual how to do that one. Uh, but what it is, uh, in case if your camera wasn't exactly lining up where your needle is going, there's a little calibration function that allows you to put a little uh, white sticker. Uh, there's a... Uh, there's a set of little white stickers. They kind of look like, uh, 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 let me see if I can show, oops, I just dropped mine. There's one, they look like little white stickers. And you see there's a little hole on mine on that one. That's just the only time I ever used it. I still kept my little sticker. Uh, what it tells you on that point, to put the new 7511 needle in the machine, put this sticker on the stitch plate, and then do that little uh, test. You push, I can't remember what button, but it tells you what button to push. And then it'll, the needle goes down and comes up and it makes that little hole in, the, in that sticker. And then the camera looks where the hole is. So it knows to calibrate exactly on that spot. And then that sticker is no longer good for uh, uh, reusing for that purpose. So that is uh, what, the, uh, what it is telling to do. Again, like I said, I've done it once, but uh, it can be done if you ever doubt that your camera is not reading correctly. Um, I, it is of some of those functions that Alan does, uh, I think, part of his uh, service when he services the machines. So I would just on the Dream Machine and Destiny when you get that message, just say, okay. So the next one, we have a, a, a question mark. Again, some of these symbols on uh, some machines, they are on the bottom. So depending on the machine, some of these symbols are on the bottom, some are on the top. But we all have a question mark. That is a great online help. So on this case, um, I have uh, on, on, on my machine, I get this uh, PDF manual because this machine did not come with the hard copy manual anymore. I can still download it from the uh, website from the brother for the Luminaire and the baby lock for the Solaris machine. And if I want it, I could um, print it out. Uh, but actually, even with my uh, um, Dream Machines and Destinies, I barely ever used the actual manual. I had downloaded that from, from the website and then I use it on my computer to search. Uh, so for me, it was kind of handy to have an electronic copy. The reason why they stopped doing the um, hard copy man manuals for the Solaris and Luminaire was that uh, we have so many times updates come to machines. So a uh, minute there's a new update, that manual is no longer uh, valid or some, some this is missing some information. So that is why they have the manual now online on the machine. So when the update comes, they can update the manual too. So if, uh, on the Solaris and Luminaire, when I click it, I will get for the first information about the end user license agreement. I guess that must be the legal thing. But then the, ma uh, the manual is in multiple parts. And again, I can download all of these from the manufacturer's website. So if I, I want to go for the sewing part of the machine, I will see on, the, uh, on this one, and this is 129 pages. And it's like, okay, well, I can't really see what is staying on that one. Well. I can kind of do a little pinching on it because the, uh, this one has a tablet-like screen, so I can pinch and zoom on that one. Uh, I can scroll to the next pages, 
and then I can also search. So maybe I was looking for something that about bobbins. So I get the keyboard and if I write B O B B I N, if I can spell bobbin and I touch search. So now it's looking for anything that has that bobbin. So here's highlighted my first one on that. Um, uh, oh, there we go. It's a small store in bobbin clips. <laughs> so it kind of shows all the different fun places. If I go to use this button to get to the next one to show. Oh, sorry, I oh, saw the wrong one. So anytime, any place that there's a word bobbin, it will show up on that one. So I'll hit the cancel on that one and let me close this. So I have the so uh, the operation card. No, let me sorry, wrong button. A uh, PDF manual. I have it on a sewing embroidery, and then there's an addendum which was lots of the additional features that came with the up, uh, update too. And then because I also have the upgrade, I have this one. And then if I wanted to get some more information, I even have a little QR code that I could scan and get onto the brother support uh, uh, place to get some more information. Okay, that is just only on the uh, Solaris and Luminate. But all our machines, we have operation guide, which uh, we have had a long, long time, this information on all these bigger screens, so that uh, we don't have to look necessarily things in the manual. We can find this information that see that if I ever wondered, uh, kind of, well, how would I use that knee lever? So all I had to do in the principal parts, I will touch this one, and it'll tell me how, uh, how the knee lifter works, how you plug it in, and then a little bit how, how to op what it does. All it does is lift your pressure foot up and down. It's a great, great feat, so I love using that one. Let me go back on this one. So this one has the principal uh, parts, then there's the principal patterns. So any of those uh, hard patterns that we have in the machine bed. So if you wonder, well, what is that looks like a little uh, bull's eye pattern? What does that do? If I touch this, it'll tell me it is a reinforcement tie-on pattern, kind of stitch in place. So that is uh, just a description for all those patterns. Then we have basic operation. Again, it's a great one and when you have a new machine and you kind of wonder, am I threading the machine correctly? Am I winding the uh, poppins correctly? Or anytime you need a little refresher. So let's see winding the poppin. And it shows in here the picture, but here's, here's what you're going to do. 23 pages. Well, it's kind of like it's not really that hard to wind up popping, but these are very detailed instructions. They're actually kind of cute. They made them a little animated. You see that kind of little button moves, a uh, little uh, spool moves in there on the spool pin. Uh, but it's kind of a tedious to re read 23 pages and look these pictures. Well, anytime if you see a little movie, uh, either movie camera or film strip, that means that there is a built in video on this machine about this one. So let me touch this one, and now I will see a little uh, movie uh, that will start showing about how to wind the bobbin. So these are great videos, and depending on the machine, um, some of the machines have over 30 built-in videos, and some of the ones may only have three. So depending on the model, we have different amounts. But they are really kind of slow motion uh, 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 videos. They're all silent movies. And the reason why they're silent movies is we can select the language on the display on our machines. There are multiple languages, so they could not possibly have taped all of these with all the languages. So they are all silent movies, but they're very detailed. And if you need to ever to pause, you can now pause and kind of do it together with it, or then you can go back and forth and uh, uh, it will just kind of show it with very detail on exactly how this uh, works. So let me close this one. So anytime you see a little movie camera or then this film strip, depending, depending on a machine, the symbol is different, but it gets you to the a movie. So there are a lot of videos on this machine. So we have the basic operation on the machine, and then we have also basic uh, embroidery operations, kind of about the tensions and stabilizers, hooping, putting the embroidery unit and so on. We also have information about troubleshooting. So in case if you kind of keep saying that, well, why am I machine skipping stitches? Well, it tells possibly maybe you know, it wasn't uh, threaded correctly. And let's go ahead and thread it. So it will have possible causes with some really the, uh, copy on the manual, but it's nice to have it right online on this one. And finally, we have maintenance, and that is just how, how do we clean the popping area. So I can either, again, uh, look the text on this one and scroll down to go see exactly how to do that one or I can watch the movie about to, uh, how to do it. 
So again, anytime if you have a little movie camera, it will show you the uh, little movie about it. Let me close that one. And then we return on that one and return one more time. So, um, so that was under the operation guide. Then under the sewing guide, uh, we have a little stitch uh, kind of sewing consultant on this one. We have basic information about just the straight stitches. That just kind of tells about depending on what kind of fabrics you'd be sewing. There are a few straight stitches that can be used. And these are all interactive. So I can change my settings already on the screen if I select that stitch. So actually you can hear the noise in the machine. I can select the stitch there and I can change my settings right there. And then it will tell about on this stitch specifically that was a stem stitch, which is a great one for knit fabrics. I uh, will go in here and it will kind of go the sets on how to do that one. And the same with overcasting. And then we have several other techniques, more on a comment so inside on this page. And what I like on this one is that maybe I haven't done the blind hem stitch for a long time. So here's blind hem information. And it again tells that we have two versions of it, one for the stretch fabric or one for the other, which would mean the woven fabric. So I say I'm going to do woven fabric. So in this case, it again tells me the, uh, the stitch number and the foot to use. And then we have four pages of information showing how you need to fold the fabric, how you line it up, and how you do that stitching. And if I close these uh, windows, I'm just going to return, return, I'm going to close all these ones. My machine has already selected that stitch. So it was interactive. So I can't, I don't even need to find that stitch that happened to be 201, which is on that second group. So see, it's already selected for me and set ready to go. So this, this, uh, uh, sewing guide uh, things are all interactive that way. So the first page is more about garment sewing. Then we have a page two and that is quite a bit about uh, the quilting. So some piecing information, applique and there's echo quilting. Because several of our machines, they come with the uh, multiple free motion feet and one of them being echo quilting foot. So if I select this one, you're going to hear noises on our machine because the trip, uh, feet dogs weights just dropped. It automatically drops the feed dogs when I select this one. And this one talks about uh, this uh, echo quilting foot, what those lines are, what the distance is between the center needle position and each of those little rings on this foot. And if I go on to the settings, it kind of tells me that, yeah, I need to go for the uh, uh, free motion mode. And because this one is a uh, low shank foot, as a reminder, we would need to use that adapter on this to take your normal angle out, put the adapter with the screw on that one, and then uh, attach the foot onto that. So it goes very detailed on how to use that, and then we can do the uh, free motion quilting. Again, if I go back, close these windows, uh, it has only select me, selected me the straight stitch, and this time it selects the stitch 01. And it is the, it tells me to use the, uh, the old foot, which really uh, we don't have the free the echo quilting simple on this. So anytime we have other than those couple special thread stitches, it always puts the old simple. But it already have dropped my feet dogs, so I can put them back up there. Yep. But anytime I selected the stitch, the Kali mentioned that uh, we'll see quite a bit information about that stitch because we have an image on this one and then we can touch this image key that we have a little bit of a closer look we can zoom onto it can change the colors so quite a bit information the name in there and the stitch number but then if i touch a little question mark i'd like to know more about it the next button it says pattern explanation so i can have a description about what that stitch is the name and the uh, number of it and the foot to be recommended to use with it and it tells me, yep, this stitch is used for reinforcing on light to medium weight fabrics. It's a little over, overcasting stitch. But some of these stitches, you may have more than just that little uh, one line information. And this one, I have four pages. So I click the next page. It'll even show how to use that one. So I don't have to again wonder, well, what do you mean overcasting? What does that mean? So I can go and check on this one to see exactly how that stitch works. So that was the under the pattern explanation. So there was uh, more information about any of the stitches I selected. And then, like we could access lots of those videos under this operation guide, but we can also access all the videos uh, straight onto that button that says video. 
Again, that is only available on the Dream Machine Destiny and, and the uh, Stelle uh, Luminaire. Uh, Altair, uh, Solaris, uh, Media, I list all the ones. All the ones that we have more than just the three videos. Those ones we have then a, even a separate group that I can access. So if I only know that yeah, I want to see how that popping winding goes, I can just go on that uh, video button and look the, vid the same video or just to straight on this one. So I can access some of these on multiple places. So we have basic operation videos, sewing videos, embroidery videos. There's a lot of those ones and this one. My design center or IQ designer area, the machines, we have that uh, capability. We have some videos about that one. Settings. I'll be going through a lot of these settings on uh, the settings button on here earlier. But uh, we on this machine, we also have information about the, uh, the projection and the wireless. And then uh, when I mentioned earlier that the camera calibration, well, there's even a video about using that little sticker and now uh, going to go in the settings. How do we do it on the Solaris and Luminaire? So again, there was, we just go back on that one. So we have a lot of videos on that. Accessories, kind of how to use the dual feed, uh, the knee lever, the buttonhole foot, and then on the cleaning, how do we can uh, clean the popping area and also how to calibrate the screen. And then there's even the information about the app because with that, because I have the upgrade one on my machine, so I have this little extra video about how to use the stitch monitoring app. I can turn on that one. So that was again, I get it onto that, so starts in the video button. So these are kind of uh, groups of the different videos that we have. These are all the built in videos. We can also watch videos that I have downloaded on my memory stick. And they need to be MP4 format, and there is a certain limited size. We can't be watching hours and hours of uh, movies on this one, but uh, we can. Uh, and I can't remember the exact number. Different machines have a little bit different ones. I believe it used to be on the uh, Destiny and Dream machine, 17 minutes, but um, I I only watched a little uh, few few short videos on this one. So I'm I have uh, plugged the memory stick on my machine, and I I have two. USB ports. I have my mouse plugged on the on that second port, so my USB is on the top port. So it's just re it's reaching here all the uh, different uh, folders that I have on this USB, but I have downloaded a little MP4 movie on that one. Well, this one now is not the silent movie. You can actually even hear that one. It's a little commercial. You can make business cards with your name, print from hiking, hanging frames, sew some shades, block the sun, keep out creepy peeping thumbs, with brother at your side, always good time. You got a brother, got a brother at your side, and uh, whatever follows always ends up in his eyes. You can make a basket cover for your cat, another for his brother, so they both match. No more same, stop those games, make some labels with their names. No Well, that was just a little commercial, but just showing that I can watch some of the MP4 movies and they do need to be on that format. And I can do download on my memory stick and if I want it, I can even touch the memory and I could save them onto my machine's memory. So then I could be able to watch them on the things that I've saved. At the moment, I don't have anything saved on my machine. But uh, that is just another option on, on that one. So uh, if you have a certain sewing video that you wanted to watch on your screen on the machine, you can do that one. Just one little note, uh, no texting and driving, meaning whenever you're watching videos, you can't sew on the machine. That sewing function is turned off, so we can't ha take our eyes off the wheel. So that was all the information we have under this uh, uh, the uh, question mark little help button. A lot, a lot of really good information there. Well, then uh, the next one on the row is the settings, and I'll call, I'll do a whole segment on that one, and I'm gonna uh, skip a bit. So then there is a, uh, the, uh, the camera button that I already used at any time we have in either sewing or embroidery side, I can turn on the, uh, ca uh, the kind of camera to watch on, uh, on the stitches. 
uh, and then uh, on the machines that we have the wireless, I can access the set setting on the wireless uh, through this button, which is actually the, to, uh, towards the end of the pages on my setting screen. So I can access that on a couple different ways. So I'm going to just to close that one at this time because I will be going that through all on that setting screen.